I'd like to share with you, um, first of all, the classical way that uh, Dr. Alexander Lowen, the founder of Bioenergetics, um, showed how to get uh, the legs vibrating, streaming, because uh, this is uh, therapeutic for you. Uh, why is it therapeutic? Because we're all mammals, and uh, when we get stressed or traumatized, we tend to store uh, the feeling in the body, we repress it, and it becomes part of our muscle armor. So, uh, all animals shake after they have been traumatized, but human beings usually repress that part of the recovery process. So in therapy, in bioenergetic therapy, it's common to encourage the client to shake the legs. Uh, and I'll show you the technique how to get a client to do that, um, as I said, in the classic classical way. Uh, first of all, put the roller. Uh, in the waist and then uh, I sort of build it up I ask my client to put their palms on the belly and establish a slow deep breathing in the belly breathe in slowly good just feel that every that's the first stage then I build it more complex. The next stage is to get my client to breathe in and press the bottom into the floor. Keep it slow. And then when they breathe out, to push on the toes, lift the heels, so the pelvis rises. Using the roller as a fulcrum, as a balance point. Just do that, do that a couple of times, see you. Good. Yes. You notice that legs are already beginning to tremble, to shake. But I can amplify that by asking my client to make a, a sound. And for the sound to come, from the lower belly if possible. So I encourage them to relax the diaphragm so the sound comes all the way up. Uh, and it's like basically a deep sound, not strangled in the throat. Very good, yes. Uh, can you increase the volume of the sound a little? You ah. just slightly. Ah. Good. Let the voice express your feeling. Carry on. Ah. Good. Yeah, come down. Relax. 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 Drop your heels so that the vibrations stop. And uh, uh, let me take out the roller. Uh, bend your knees up to your chest. Yeah, and hold on to one wrist. And then rock gently. So you massage your back, integrate. How does it feel? What, you know, what's coming up? Be aware of it. And then uh, come down. Hold your ankles if you can. And uh, lift your pelvis. <clears throat> Walk your shoulders a little closer. Good. So you have a really high bridge. So this is a, already a modified stress position. 
it's that much more powerful because the muscles in the thighs are now being stretched and uh, uh, I'm going to charge Henry with energy by asking him to tap with his pelvis and make a sound, relax, whatever sound comes. Yeah. So, so the pelvis gets looser, maybe it's been frozen. Good. voice express any feeling that's coming up. Stay up, slow down, stay up. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Let the shaking now move from the legs up into the belly and even up to your chest. So your whole body is literally streaming, vibrating. Check your breathing. Breathe out twice as long. Nice and slow. <sighs> you, you can come down if you want to. Integrate, yeah, bring up the knees. That's a good way to integrate, breathe into it. I'd, I'd like to show uh, uh, the basic David Bersali way of uh, getting the body to vibrate, to shake to uh, go through what the body couldn't do in the trauma. It's, it's almost like, uh, un, you know, reliving the trauma and finishing the movement, whatever the person needed to do that they couldn't do at the time. So uh, what Berselli does is he modifies this by putting, can you put your feet flat together? And then you lift the pelvis <clears throat> for about a minute or whatever you can hold. You can come down as soon as you feel tired. And this is stretching the psoas muscle. Psoas muscle is deep. It's inserted to the spinal cord and to the leg. It's the only muscle that does that. And Berselli says that this is the trauma muscle of the body. That's where the trauma is stored. So we're going to stretch it and then let it vibrate. When you get tired, come down. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Now close your knees about five centimeters on each side. Yes. Yeah. Breathe into that. Good. Great. You're right there. Yeah. What you see is the legs are shaking. That's the lower end of the psoas. And what's uh, very nice is that Henry's stomach is vibrating 
which means that the upper end of the psoas is also contracting and letting go. So the release is a much deeper one. Good, don't control it. You know, the movements are spontaneous. Whatever comes, comes. Very good. You know, follow your feelings, whatever uh -huh. feeling comes, you can. and the rest. You can stretch up your legs, stretch up your legs. Now I'm going to show you my modification of David Bersali's uh, exercise. Uh, I put myself behind my client and uh, I get my client to reach up and hold me by the waist so he feels safe. And then I can also support by holding the sides of the client whilst the legs are shaking, and contain them. This is more like containing a client so they can scream and cry or whatever feeling comes and feel safe and supported. Shall we try that? Mm -hmm. Yes. So put your feet flat together, come up and yeah, stretch the psoas. And a modif modification I've done too, which I think is very effective, is to vibrate the voice because that breaks through the resistance. So relax your throat and just vibrate your voice.
Lot of sadness, sir. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh. Feelings tend to come in waves. So uh, it's good to let the client integrate one wave of feeling and then wait for the next one. The usual feelings that come up are rage, terror, and sadness. Those are the three, three main feelings of uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. But of course, post-traumatic stress disorder is just the tip of the iceberg. Most people have some kind of trauma. When you're ready, yeah? Can we try it once more? Is that okay? Yeah. I'm going to tap you. Uh, When humans are faced by a threat, there are three main reactions that can take place, fight, flight, and freeze. The goal of the therapy is to move the client from a helpless state of freeze to one of fight, flight, when they have a better chance of survival. I'm waiting for the breathing pattern to change. It's a sign that the wave of feeling is over. It's now beginning to happen here. Just brief as you were. Good. Relax. Integrate. You can stretch out your legs. Relax, integrate, you've done fine. You let a lot of feeling out. I also do sometimes at the end, uh, for the client to relax more and feel integrated, and it's just to take the arms, hold my hands, relax, let go of your shoulders, and then pull downwards to release the stiffness in the shoulders, just try and let go. And then make a test. Just let me move your arms so there's no resistance at all. 
Totally let go. That's very good. Good. And bring them down. Then another thing I like doing is to lift the legs up to the ceiling, which is something you do in Shatsu. And uh, try and get them rather straight. Okay. And then you cross your fore, stick your toes underneath the bottom, cross your forearms on the front of the toes. Relax. Integrate, relax. Good, that's a good breathe. Stretch out the legs. I can even test if Henry's totally relaxed by moving the body to see if the movement goes right up to the head. And it does. Good. And then it's nice to end the session with the therapist sitting or kneeling next to the client and putting a hand the client's chest or the belly just to show they're still there supporting. Um, could you share with me uh, the experience? Yeah. What was it like? Yeah. Um, the, the, it was very emotional. Mm -hmm. uh, and I experienced first this, this fear of, of, of actually letting the emotions come up. There is a resistance. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't want to. Mm -hmm. you know, so. And then I felt giving, the body giving, giving up a bit mm -hmm. and letting go. Mm -hmm. And that's when the shaking came, mm. became stronger. Mm. And, and then I felt uh, a, a deep sorrow, mm. very deep sorrow, and, and anger. I got mm. very, very angry, mm. like really angry. And, and also scared, it was very scary. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a good thing, I, I, I felt, because these emotions, I have experienced emotions, or these emotions before. Yes. But it's, they're, they're, it's such a difference trusting somebody who's there with you mm. and holding on. So yes. you can really, I really felt much, um, much less afraid of, the, of what was coming. Yes. Because I felt you weren't afraid. Yes. So I could lean, you know. Yes. Um, mm. So I was, I was conscious of, of as an adult, mm. if you want to, I was conscious that you were there and if something happened, you would help me, you know. Mm. Mm. And then I could also let, on another level, I could let these emotions just come out and, and, and let go. Mm. Yeah, very good. Yes. Mm. Because that, that's my goal, that you mm. release the... Uh, these, uh, you know, repressed memories mm. in your body, allow them to surface mm. uh, so that you recover from this uh, trauma permanently in mm. the future. And do, do you have any idea, you know, what they were about? Because you've mentioned mm. the three main feelings of trauma, mm. you know, you mentioned the rage, the fear and the sadness. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I understand it has to do with my family history uh, of the war, the Second World War, and what that did to my parents, and um, how that got, tr you know, transferred over to us, or how we carried that. Yes. The fear, and, and my mother has talked a lot about her experiences during the war. She shared a lot. So, on that level, I. I sort of feel that I, my fantasy is that these emotions fit her description of what was going on at that time because mm. I, I feel that I that that is related. Mm. You know. Were you? You're almost saying that you were living some of her 
feeling that yeah, she couldn't yeah. express. Yeah. I, sometimes it's almost like you can smell it. Mm. The things that she describes, they're mm. so, they're so um, mm. vivid. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. these emotions feel very much related to that. Yes, it, it sounds right. Mm. Mm. What, what happened in your body? What was it like? Um, the trembling. It's not on a. It, it, it just goes on. It just happens. It's first. It's it's. I if I, I'm trying to intellectualize something that is very emotional. But it, it's like first there's a struggle in me to let go mm. and not to let go because you know you're yes. supposed as an you're supposed to behave. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You're not supposed to, <laughs> to show all these emotions. Yes. So there's a struggle between relaxing and holding on mm. and and this sort of movement mm. go in the end that started to vibrate and that in itself became uh, self-going it, it wasn't on a conscious I wasn't conscious of doing it it just mm -hmm. went started and sh I was shaking I think another and I think also uh, the exercise is good because you can't deal with it on an intellectual level but mm -hmm. if you if you uh, if you just follow your body, it tells you how you what's wrong with you or what's good with you or what mm. what you're about. You know, you, the trembling. I f when I felt the fear, for instance, and mm. the trembling, mm. I understood I was afraid. But th if I go to my mind or the intellect, intellect, it says, you know, no, you're not afraid, or it's just it's nothing. You know, it's nothing. Mm. But the body tells you, oh yes, there's some, there, you know, it's a big deal. Deal with it, mm. and you'll feel better. Mm. Uh, so, so it's it's a good exercise to to get you in touch with your body as well, mm. to to get you to listen to mm. to what's going on in you, mm. yeah. Mm. Bypassing the ego. Yes. <laughs>